Today, we will look back at the story of Tap Out, MMA's first clothing brand. Back in 1997, three men got together and started an MMA brand of clothing named Tap Out. Just 10 years later, it was the biggest MMA clothing brand in the world and had a turnover of more than $200 million. Sadly, it went downhill from there and had a tragic ending that saw one of the original founders killed in a horrific car crash. So, what's the deal with Tap Out? Tap Out has been described as the Ed Hardy of MMA clothing, and this description is pretty accurate. Its style is instantly recognisable, and dare we say it, overly flamboyant. For instance, most Tap Out t-shirts would have skulls, flames, and other tribal markings. This quickly grew a reputation that it was worn by knuckleheads and overly aggressive MMA fans. We have to remember, back then times were different and both MMA and the UFC were trying to move away from the previous blood sport reputation. Tap out fans did little to change this perception. In fairness, this was not the fault of the tap out brand, but instead their clothes seemed to be adopted by morons. For the record, at this time, a lot of general MMA fans would also wear the brand, who were largely well behaved. Sadly though, it only takes a few idiots to ruin a public image. To briefly summarise, Tap Out was pretty huge at one point and had loud clothing that was visually very easy to notice. This, combined with crazy MMA fans, led to a reputation that never truly recovered. Tap Out was smarter than people think. These days, people look back at Tap Out with a snobby attitude. As mentioned, this is a bit unfair, but regardless, the founders were not idiots. Back then, you could pay to sponsor the clothes worn by UFC fighters, whereas these days, it's a closed deal with the likes of Reebok and Venom dominating the clothing. In other words, Anyone could pay to get their clothes worn, and this is exactly what Tap Out did. Tap Out was one of the first companies around to aggressively market their brand on charismatic fighters such as Dan Hardy and Chael Sonnen, who wore their shirts and logos to the Octagon. As a result, people would see their loud clothing and buy it. These days, this marketing tactic is commonplace, and is often used in combination with social media influencers and celebrities. However, back in the early 2000s, it was relatively unheard of. Because of this, you could claim that Tap Out was ahead of its time and a pioneer in MMA clothing. One of the three founders of Tap Out was Charles Lewis Jr. If Tap Out was known for its loud appearance, then Lewis Jr. matched this image perfectly with his equally outlandish persona. For instance, he was also known as Mask due to wearing face paint and hats which almost gave him a WWE wrestling look. It wasn't just Mask who had a strange persona either, with co-founder Tim Katz also referred to as Skyscraper due to his 6 foot 7 frame. Sadly, age 45, Mask died in a car crash in 2009. Here, his Ferrari collided with a Porsche, whose driver was intoxicated, and later arrested for manslaughter. After this, the UFC paid tribute to Charles Lewis Jr., who was posthumously inducted into their Hall of Fame. This made him the first ever non-MMA fighter to be inducted into the roster, which speaks volumes about his involvement within the company. Around this time, the public perception of MMA began to change. Tap Out arguably became more taboo and those who wore the clothes were sometimes stigmatised. You could claim that this was the kiss of death for any brand where people wear the clothes are ridiculed and looked down upon. In short, MMA was taken more seriously and wasn't seen as such a freak show anymore. Because of this, Tap Out was less trendy and brands such as Reebok started moving in. Obviously, with the death of Lewis Jr., 
this also drastically changed the way the company operated. This led to AGB purchasing Tap Out in 2010, who then did a licensing deal with WWE four years later. Here, WWE would sell Tap Out branding clothing alongside their wrestling image and would attempt to remarket Tap Out as a more of a gym lifestyle brand rather than a simple MMA fighting brand. This move did not work out too well for the WWE as it never really took off, even though they had superstars such as John Cena wearing the newly remodelled tap out clothing, it didn't exactly move mountains. At this point you could say that the gym market was already very saturated so it was an impossible task for the likes of Vince McMahon and co to penetrate it. Years later, the tap out brand isn't really much of a thing anymore and can't even be purchased on the WWE's website. Having said this, it is still available on sites such as Amazon and certain budget retailers where you can pick up shirts for around $5 brand new. This says a lot about Tap Out and how its status has fallen. It should also be noted that since moving to the WWE, it ditched the crazy designs for a more subtle logo. In other words, if you still want to wear Tap Out, then you can. Similarly, you can still pick up some of the retro gear on eBay too from the used marketplace. What should be said though, is wearing this brand will likely earn you some funny looks. So, with the rise and fall of Tap Out, it would be very easy to dismiss it and focus on the negatives, but you also have to admire the success. Three regular guys got together and made an internationally recognised brand, and this deserves credit. As previously mentioned, they weren't fools and knew how to market their brand and make it work in a competitive and new arena. With that being said, it's quite disappointing to see the current status of Tap Out. On the one hand, the memes can be funny, and there's definitely some truth in terms of its customer base and where MMA was at the time. On the other hand, it made a lot of people rich and helped shape the way sponsorship branding deals were designed in MMA. Because of this, it's fair to say that Tap Out should be remembered as a pioneering force within the MMA world and one that you won't forget any time soon.